So another mechanism for uh, overpressure is hydrocarbon column heights. So we all know that hydrocarbons are more buoyant than water, right? Anybody who's spilled a drop of oil when it's raining, when you're, you're changing your oil in your car while it's raining, right, then you just spill a little bit. It floats and creates a little slick. Or we don't even have to be that imaginative because we all know about what happened a few years ago in the, in the Gulf of Mexico, right? So the um, hydrocarbons are more buoyant than water. And so if you have an isolated formation uh, and that's close to an aquifer or or has water in it, then the hydrocarbons will essentially float to the top. And at the top of any of these isolated formations, you'll have a higher pressure. Because remember that the, our hydrostatic, you know, our definition of overpressure is more than hydrostatic, right? And, and then the hydrostatic definition really comes from that 0.44 uh, psi per foot is associated with water. Right? So And so this is subtle, but this is you can you can actually see this in some um, pore pressure. Let's see. Oops. So this is some pore pressure versus depth data. And for the most part, it follows uh, hydrostatic. So the lines, the dash lines, are hydrostatic, right? So for the most part, this follows hydrostatic. But at the tops, at the highest, you have these kicks, right? These little kicks where the data doesn't quite follow the hydrostatic. This is due to, <coughs> this is due to hydrocarbons. You know, more buoyant than the water on, on top of the formation. Okay? 